Hello, I'm Harvey S. And we're here at Harvey's Corner at Colstein, NYC. And uh, this is a new podcast that we're starting, and it's called Bass in the Corner. <laughs> As you know, when when we get to a place, we always want to put the bass in the corner. We, yeah. need, we need the corners. Yes, so. yes, yes. <laughs> Got that. So what I'm doing is uh, interviews with bass players who I call the lifeblood of the New York music scene. Um, these are, are like me, what I do. They play with all kinds of people. They do all kinds of music. They're a leader sometimes, but the, the music scene is vibrant. They play in shows. They play in Latin bands. They play in jazz groups. They play in, you know, lounges. We, we do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And, but we never get a lot of notoriety. <laughs> So I, I thought, well, it might be nice, to, you know, like to, to have some of the bass players get, you know, get to know that you go into a restaurant and you see a band play mm -hmm. and you might see Hill Green playing. Yeah. And, but now you know who he is. <laughs> you will if you watch this podcast. So anyway, we have the wonderful, my good friend, Hill Green. Thanks for having me. Or Hilliard Green. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um. Ran into somebody recently that knew the person I was named after. They were a family friend of theirs. Oh. And this woman's like probably in her late 70s or early 80s or something like that. And um, she's a well-known dancer and dance teacher. And uh, she just happened to know the person that I was named after. Wow. Yeah. And so that's, yeah, she knew the person well. So and that, that was, was Hilliard. Yeah, that was yeah, Hilliard. Was Hilliard. Oh, okay, yeah. well, great. So... You know, like I was saying before, you know, people want to know about Hill Green. They can go on, you know, Wikipedia or whatever. Yeah. And they'll read about you and know all the great stuff you've done. You yeah. know, Jimmy Scott and all that. Yeah. But this podcast, we go a little different, you know, yeah. because I want this to be stuff that you don't get every, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to start with what are you doing recently? Very recently. Yeah. Very recently. I just came back from France. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, two days ago. And I was playing in, um, doing some gigs, some trio gigs, and some gigs backing up a French vocalist. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. It was interesting. What was the me? French vocalist's name? Yeah. Maud. I can't say her last <laughs> name, but, but good, Godot or something like that. But it, it was hard. It's hard for me to uh, well, speak. Well, you don't that. speak the French. You no. Know, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Mon français en peu. <laughs> Moi aussi. Yeah. <laughs> so... But but they were very patient while I was trying to you know navigate my way in speaking with with everybody uh, there. Yeah. Where did you play? Uh, it was it was in um, a, a town called La Rochelle, La uh, Rochefort. Rochefort. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we played in uh, various places, you know, in that area, and um, yeah, it was nice. Kind some was one one gig was a jazz festival. One was an outdoor venue. Um, I, I, there's several were outdoor venues, and one was in a marina. Where they were had a, had a big construction where they built submarines in World War Two. Yeah, yeah, wow. that was yeah, that That's was interesting. interesting. Yeah, that was interesting, and um, so played with a lot of different really good musicians there. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um. So, were they all American musicians? Or you playing with French? I was playing with one American musician. All the rest were French musicians, except for one one musician, piano player. He was Italian. That oh, was, okay. lives in Paris. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like yeah. a great gig. Oh, yeah. Good. And what about around town? Yeah, around town, I've just been playing with different people. Probably the most uh, notoriety person, notoriety I'm playing with is James Carter. And, oh, uh, yeah. 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 And um, we did a stint at Birdland earlier this year, and then um, they're setting up a tour, a couple of tours for us in Europe next summer. Good for you. Yeah. Wow. yeah. James so, Carter's yeah, amazing. Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, he just very high energy, you know. You, you, as soon as you hit the band, no shortage then, of energy on you, that guy. Right, right. <laughs> it just goes. As soon as you hit and start to play, you go. <laughs> you just stay there. <laughs> yeah, I've seen him uh, yeah. play before, and it's yeah, yeah. very exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just... very, yeah, it's very exciting. Oh, it's, good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, 
and um, been doing stuff on the what they call the avant-garde scene and stuff. And so um, there's a festival coming up um, in Hell's Kitchen, um, coming up, I think, weekend after next. And uh, in Hell's Kitchen so with William Hooker. So that would Hooker. be like uh, in it's, September. Yeah, September 7th, 8th, and 9th, I think the dates are, whatever that weekend is. And that's um, William Hooker is the producer and the organizer. He's mm-hmm. a terrific drummer. And so I'll be doing a couple shows during that. And, and who then, are you going to play with? Yeah, I'll be doing one gig with William Hooker. I'll be doing another one with um, Patrick Brennan. I recorded mm-hmm. a record with Patrick Brennan, and we're playing on that Friday of that weekend um, uh, with Michael T.A. Thompson um, for part of that festival. And then I think he wants me to do a little bit of a solo on on the Saturday, the Saturday following. Um, uh, so I'm not sure if that's supposed to be publicly announced, but um, anyway. Well, I would, <laughs> yeah, but I think by the yeah yeah, but maybe by the time this comes out, the day will pass, so I won't be in trouble for announcing it early. Right. Uh, yeah. That's okay. I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so you do a solo bass thing? So I'll do a solo bass oh, thing. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. You have to send me a thing on that. I'm okay. Gonna, I'd be curious to yeah. see that. Yeah. Yeah. Be some interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah. Performing solo is my favorite way to perform. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, for me, I don't know, but you know, yeah, yeah. I should. People have said to me, "You should do a solo concert." I said, "Well, I don't know." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not everybody's cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it, it takes it's, it takes a lot of concentration. Yeah. And. and takes a lot but i'm yeah. sure yeah i'd like to see what you do i'll get can i, can I steal some ideas from you <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i went mike bizio who's a terrific bassist i went up to him after i heard him do a solo performance and i said you're going to hear a lot of your stuff on my next record <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah michael he's great yeah yeah, yeah he's he's, amazing yeah oh good yeah yeah so now when you you, you were you from originally yeah i'm from iowa originally. iowa wow. yeah yeah I don't meet that many people from Iowa. Yeah, no, nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fact, when I first got to Berkeley uh, in the late late seventies, very late seventies, um, I had to had a class with uh, Professor Billy Pierce, oh, and everybody had to say their name, what instrument they played, and where they were from. <laughs> so it came to my turn. I said my name, instrument I played, and as soon as I said where I was from, he just shook his head. Uh-oh. I guess jazz is all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> Even in Iowa. Yeah, right. Wow. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So now, uh, who were you like early influences on playing the bass? Yeah. One of my biggest ones was Stanley Clark. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. And in fact, he's the one who got me really hooked on the idea of, of playing unaccompanied. Yeah, because there's a there's a there's a record that he did early on called and it was piece was called Spanish Phases for Strings and Bass, mm. where he does some unaccompanied playing, and that was very inspiring to me. And then there's the bassist that played with um uh uh oh in with the in crowd. Why am I blanking? Oh, Ramsey Lewis. Ramsey Lewis, right? And I think I believe his name was oh, Elliot. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, and, I I, yeah, yeah. And I used to listen to that record. I love that yeah, record. yeah, and I so so I ended up you know doing a lot of his a lot of his stuff, and then when I finally went to hear him on the hear him at the Blue Note year, decades later, I was just like, that's that's what I, that's what I, <laughs> yeah, and it was, it was that was inspiring, and then you know um, uh, I like Charlie Hayden, uh, Ron Carter of course, and there were several other ones, but. Um, and then when, you know, Jaco Pastores came on the scene, that was also influential. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, the, and, um, so, you know, there were, you know, the ones that, you know, that influenced others. But I think Stanley Clark and uh, Hole were the, were the ones that, that um, d- did the most, did the most for me. Yeah, well, Stanley, yeah. uh, he's an amazing yeah. bass player. Yeah. An amazing musician. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah, I remember hearing Stanley when he was a kid. I think he was playing with Freddie Hubbard or something. That's or, possible, yeah. yeah. Or Joe Henderson. But Probably Joe Henderson. I think it was Joe, Joe Henderson. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, it was just like, wow. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, like, just as a kid, he was yeah, right. really good. Yeah. And I mean, it was just his sound and his technique. I was just, you know, I just never heard a bass played like that before. I was just like, 
wow. You know, because I was still a teenager. And I was like, Yeah, he had wow. a style and a yeah. concept. Yeah, uh, yeah. Very young. Yeah. He did. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and ridiculous technique. Yeah, right. He could really yeah. zip around the yeah, face. Yeah, you know? right. Right. He made a record, I remember, with Pete Yellen. I, I, I on, must have heard it. Yeah. I forget the label. Okay. But it really, and they ended up letting him go wild on the record. Oh, wow. Maybe I haven't heard that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, if you could find that, it's yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah. He's like very young, probably in the 70s. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah. They, he just went wild. Yeah. Right? You know, yeah. they just they did what he wanted to yeah. do. They yeah. couldn't stop him. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So yeah, 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 yeah. he was really good. Yeah. So he was those, those interesting uh, yeah. uh, people that you that that you know got you involved. Yeah. You know, uh, it's good to hear yeah. that. Um, so now, um, let's see. Like, what, what are you like? Oh, that's. Oh, my mind. Yeah. I've been doing this all day. So I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, my yeah, mind yeah, sorry. Going, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can, I can so, relate. I can relate. <laughs> but I, I wanted to talk about, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, some of your records. Yeah. yeah. Oh, s- tell me about spirituals. Yeah. That's my, this is my second solo record. Now, is that solo bass? Yeah, solo bass. It's un- oh. un- un- unaccompanied. And I, 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 I do several stuff. Put it up here. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Just so they look at yeah. it. Yeah. And, the reason it's called spirituals, I take Negro spirituals that relate to the Underground Railroad. Oh man! Yeah. Yes, and I've I've, I've made I've made uh, solo bass pieces out of those, and the the, the ones that they're called as Negro spirituals that um, enslaved Africans use to escape from the South to the North. So like Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, Way in the Water, and um, I couldn't hear nobody pray, and um, so. I recorded several of those, plus some other things. But, right. Uh, yeah, but that's what that record's about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Underground Railroad. What was it, what's her name uh, that that ran the Underground Railroad? Oh, Harriet Tubman. No. That yes, Tubman. Yeah. She, yeah. I she, saw I saw the, the a couple of the movies about yeah, her. Yeah. I mean, she was one of the most remarkable women in the history of the planet. Yeah. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she's. I think her record was like around 300 um, slaves that she was able to get from the South to the North. And she was never and caught. And she was never caught. Never they caught. They couldn't catch her. Yeah. And no, I mean, in those days for a woman yeah. to do that, but yeah. a black woman yeah. to not be noticed, yeah. to come down yeah, and yeah. do what she did. Yeah. And then after the, that war, after that, she worked in the Civil War. She yeah. was a spy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and she was illiterate, you know, and, uh, and she couldn't read. Yeah, right, couldn't read. Yeah, I gotta say, yeah, yeah. there was one, yeah, yeah, incredible woman, one yeah. of the most incredible yeah. women of yeah. all time. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So, yeah, I want to hear this. This yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. What, bring another. And, and the, I mentioned Patrick Brennan, and this oh, is yeah, yeah, Patrick yeah, Brennan. yeah. And I don't who, know. I don't, I'm yeah. being truthful. I don't know. No, 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 not not many people would, and is it's. it's and so I'm, t- I'm taking time to mention him because we have a, a show coming up. And really? yeah, but he's a very, very creative. What does he play? He plays saxophone. Oh, okay. Uh, alto saxophone. And he's very, very creative um, with the alto and compositionally. And it's his compositions that we do. And it's can basically be one that can be made into several, but it's, it's these germs of pieces that take ideas that, that, you know, I don't know where he gets them from. But um, and we rehearse a lot, and he and it becomes something that can be very expansive. So wow. yeah, um, yeah. Well, so it's yeah, it's interesting. But Pat, Patrick Brennan, you know, Sonic Openings is what you know name name of his group. Oh, good. Well, yeah. So the people watching this podcast yeah. should look up uh, yeah. him, Patrick Brennan. Patrick yeah. Brennan. Uh, yeah, because <clears throat> it's it's good to find some you know. New voices. Yeah, right. This is this is definitely he's definitely a unique voice in the world. Yeah. In, in New prim- voices, unique yeah. voices. Yeah. Very important. Uh so yeah, man. Yeah. And this is Paul Harding. Um, and he's a poet. Oh. A poet. And he has Ronnie Barrage on drums and, and um Joe Ford on alto. Mm. And Great um players. yes. And he's I really like what he does with his with his poetry. He's a you know, he's 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 as serious as anybody, anybody we know with poetry and jazz. 
So and, he likes to, uh, uh, yeah, like. He likes. A, does he like rhythmic stuff or more free? More free. More, more free. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. More free atmosphere. And um, and you check his check his poetry out. It's really it's really it's uh-huh. really interesting and you know um, really different perspective on oh, how to present jazz. Amazing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This CD. Yeah. yeah this is um, one that uh, Rick uh, Russo and his wife Bettina have been producing. And they have assembled some, you know, really good musicians. Yeah. Oh, who else is on there? With yeah, you? yeah. Um, let me go over the list because it's it's um, Nick Russo, Bettina Hershey, Miles Griffith, David oh, Miles. Pleasant. Yeah, and um, Jennifer Vincent is even on this. Group. Jennifer's uh, a good friend. Yeah, right? yeah. And there's a you know several others. I won't go through the whole names right now, but um, yeah, this key, record came out nice, and they've been doing a lot to promote it, and it's been making its way on the folk charts. And and also uh, Bettina and um, Nick are have been very good people to work oh, with. Oh, they're wonderful. Yeah. I did some gigs with them. Yeah. Like I told you, uh, we were talking about uh, Nick. I knew him when when he, you know, he. I know now he's playing banjo more straight ahead. Yeah. But I knew when he was playing some risky time yeah. signature jazz he, music. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So and so he can do it all. Yeah, he can. Yeah, he's a, he's a very good musician and very versatile musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I like Nick a lot. Yeah, and yeah. Tina sings beautifully. Yeah, she does. And uh, so, yeah, oh, yeah. that's nice. Yeah, all, all good things. Yeah, uh, that you're doing. So, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, where do you you're living in the Bronx? Yeah, I'm living in the Bronx. Yeah, I've been in the Bronx since 2007. And one time I was. I was someplace, it was somebody's memorial, I forget who, and then I ran into a real estate person, and they said, <laughs> you can buy a place in the Bronx for 100000 or less. I was like, what? And so I, you know, I at that point, I just, you know, started running around looking for it, and I eventually found something, and, you know, I found out I really do like the Bronx and been up there ever since. Um, met my girlfriend, Stephanie Griffin, who's a terrific violist. Oh, Yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, she got her doctorate. And her master's and her doctorate at Juilliard. Ooh. Yeah, and she bought a place in the Bronx. And so, you know, we've become Bronx people, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I'm a Bronx people. Yeah, too. right, right. <laughs> and I, I love living in the Bronx. Yeah. You know, so I'm very happy. Yeah. There. Uh, oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah so, uh, yeah. That's and great. so, and it's a straight shot from where I live to here, to the Colsteins. And so um, now that I know that, I'll be here much more often. Yeah, come, come by, because, you know, Colstein, they have. Great strings. Yeah. They have great rosin. You can yeah. you can bring your bow here or yeah. your bass if yeah. you need a repair. Yeah. Let's say you got a, a seam open or something. Yeah. Yeah. You can leave it here. Sometimes they can fix it here. Oh, okay. If it's a small repair. Yeah. Uh, but okay. If it's a heavy repair, they pretty they chip it back to Baldwin and okay. do it there. But Chris is in. Uh, I think on Thursdays. Okay. And you know, if it was a small repair, they could do it here. So you don't have to. You know, it's not so hard to bring your bass in to get it. Yeah, yeah, right. So coming here is really a good thing. Yeah, and, yeah. I, I, and there's strings, the, these these new heritage strings. Okay, I'm eager to try those. You, yeah. yeah, well, while we're here, you know, some of these basses have them. So okay. So you can try them today, okay. now. Yeah. Right after. <laughs> no, but they're really great. Yeah. Uh, uh, Alex Claffey, uh, who was here, uh-huh. just said to me, he says he wants uh, to buy a set. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, he, because he tried them, he says, "Wow, I want to get a set of those." Wow. Everyone who tried, Mike Richmond was here. Really. Yeah, yeah, he's using them now. Okay, uh, I use them. Okay, you know, <laughs> you can be assured I use them. Yeah, yeah, right. I, I help with the development. Oh, that's cool. I love them. So yeah. anyway, it, it, yeah. it it's a it, what what's good about them is they they when you first put them on, they're like any other string. They're a little tinny, yeah, and they stretch. Yeah, so you play and you go out of tune. You yeah, know? so you spend a few days, you get them. In. Yeah, break when them in. They settle yeah. in. Yeah, they stay in tune. Wow. They are. They sustain. But wow. They punch. Wow. Okay. So they're wow. really good. Yeah. So anyway, Hill it was yeah. great. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. Yeah. And yeah. Being here at the podcast. Yeah. And we will keep in touch. Okay. Okay. Great. Bronx brother. All right. All right. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks.